Hello and welcome back. I hope that your week is off to a great start. And if you're here for the first time, welcome to this channel. So today I have a story for you. It has a few lessons and it also has a bit of a lighthearted moment. So let's get straight into this. As we all know, the European Championship final took place where England went up against Italy and Italy took home the trophy. So as many of you saw, the Italian football fans waved a banner reading Megan one of us during their country's victory over England in the Euro Championship final. That is quite interesting and we'll get back to that. So the article goes on to say that the Duchess of Sussex told Oprah Winfrey in her interview of her experiences of trawling and racist abuse during her two years in the British royal family. So also as a by the way guys, I will sometimes use the word, the R word instead of saying racist. Sometimes the algorithm doesn't know the difference and I'm trying to avoid my video getting dinged. So anytime you hear R word, just know I'm talking about, you know, the. so let's go on. The article continues to say that a group of Italian fans wrote Megan's name down the white stripe in their green, white and red tricolor flag to show their support. The banner had extra pertinence as after the match, England fans really abused three of their own black players in an incident with echoes of Meghan's experience. Marcus Rashford, Jaden Sancho and Bukayo Sacco all missed penalties in the nail-biting shootout that decided the game, which had ended 1-1. So those three players went on to have quite a bit of vitriol leveled at them on social media and it drew quite a bit of condemnation from huge names all over the world. It was just the worst. It brought out such an ugly side. And this article goes on to say that Prince William as well took to Twitter to condemn the abuse that the trio received. He wrote, I am sickened by the R abuse aimed at England players affected after last night's match. It is totally unacceptable that players have to endure this abhorrent behavior. We must stop it now and all those involved should be held accountable. W. That's how he ended off his tweet. Now, as an aside, I will say that a lot of people called out um, Prince William for this post, not because the post itself was bad, but because they kept drawing attention to what Meghan had gone through and you know, and a lot of people kept asking, you know, the accounts of Kensington Royal, why they did not also voice a strong condemnation when they saw the Duchess also being subjected to some kind of vitriolic reporting and, you know, trawling and on and on. So th this article goes on to that Megan as well spoke of how she was the most trawled person in 2019. Megan said, I'm told that in 2019, I was the most trolled person in the entire world, male or female. Now, eight months of that, I wasn't even visible, she said. I was on maternity leave or with a baby, but what was able to just be manufactured and churned out, it's almost unsurvivable, she said. Prince Harry also described Megan's experience of being trolled in his own um, interview where he said, it went to a whole new depth with not just traditional media, but also social media platforms as well. I felt completely helpless, Harry said. I thought my family would help, but every single ask, request, warning, whatever it is, got met with total silence or total neglect. We spent four years trying to make it work. We did everything that we possibly could to stay there and carry on doing the role and doing the job, but Megan was struggling. So... A lot of the R word that some English fans were participating in was roundly condemned in the aftermath, including by British Prime Minister Boris Johnson and on and on. The England manager as well, Gareth Southgate, told a press conference, it's just not what we stand for. We have been a beacon of light in bringing people together and people being able to relate to the national team and the national team stands for everybody, he said, and so that togetherness has to continue. I've got to say, by the way, big hats off to Gareth Southgate. He really put out some strong statements. So let's bring this all back to Megan. It's quite interesting that the, you know, the Italian football fans took the time and wrote that on their flag, which is so near and dear to them. So for them to even put that out there really shows that truly the whole world has been watching how Megan has been treated. And 
for the pushback that some people say that they were only criticizing her、um, fairly or when she deserved to be criticized, and they point out how others have also, you know, been targeted. Who married into the royal family? Some people have to understand that there was something about the way Meghan was covered that was so unusual, and just such a negative undercurrent. And I think that many people could sense that it wasn't just the normal criticism. Because if you could look at someone criticizing someone for holding, you know, their baby bump for just going out and working the, with the work she did with the Grenfell、um, kitchen book. And they had to point out that those women were connected to what kind of group or something like that, and all the comparisons of the strange criticism between anything normal that Meghan did, and when people compared the same type of headline with what someone like, say, Kate had done, you could find for. Catherine, it was glowing for Meghan. It was always negative, whether it was avocados, whether it was, you know, just crossing the legs or you know, just silly stuff, and all of it trying to turn the nation against her. And for me, the part that really stood out was always getting interviews with her estranged family members. What kind of headlines do you think that would generate? And what did they think it was doing to her? In the run-up to her wedding, while she was pregnant, when she was, you know, you know, just trying to settle into this new country after having left everything behind, and people could not blame them in the end for walking away because where was all the strong condemnation for the negative treatment that she was facing? And the strange thing was when she was labeled a bully. All of a sudden, this is something we've all pointed out. She has been in an industry where you could not sustain a career being a bully. So does someone flip the switch after all those years? She's in her thirties. You know, all of a sudden she could not just get a whole new attitude to go along with this accusation. And there was no specificity to what she had actually done. So a lot of things, you know, right there. I've got to say that I. I'm a, for my England supporters. Of course, we feel for them, but at the end of the day, people cannot deny what they saw after the end. And I think that this calls for a lot of introspection, especially on the side of the media who had, you know, also covered these three young men who missed those penalty kicks. Some of the media companies did not do right by them, covered them very ruthlessly, and not only on that day, but there were some strange headlines here and there. And it, it also comes back to Meghan. For people in the UK to take a strong look at that, Meghan was something that was just a hand wrapped gift from God to you. Many people who did not really take note of the royal family once again thought, "Oh, perhaps you know, let's take a second look." And what in the end ended up happening? So the whole world is in fact taking note of what happened there. The Commonwealth, of course, has been taking note of how Meghan has been treated, and you know what? This is not to be negative against anyone, not negative against, you know, the British royal family. This is just pointing out that perhaps for those who have said that everything that happened with Meghan was above board, this is perhaps time for people to look deep within and really, really reflect. So. I wanted to bring this to you, and once again,、um, you know, congratulations to the Italian team for taking home the Euro. I know that they are ecstatic and over the moon, and of course for the English football team. I love and followed English football quite a while. Who knows? Perhaps next time. So、um, I'm happy to bring this to you guys. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. And before we sign off, thank you to all of my Patreon, PayPal membership supporters for this channel. I appreciate you all, and I want to give special shoutouts to those of you who support my channel. And today I want to highlight a special supporter for this channel who supports this channel financially. I want to say thank you to you, Delcinia Preston. Thank you for choosing to stand with my channel. And for those of you who like, comment, and share, I want to say thank you as well. I love you all. Leave your thoughts below. I'd love to. Read them. Have a great day wherever you are, and I will catch you in the next one. Have a blessed one.